Gamers, this video is a PSA reminder that this week is the last week to farm Last Wish Red Borders until next season, which is season 23. Last Wish has some of the best weapons in the entire game, such as Apex Predator, Tekian Forest, Nation of Beasts, Tyranny of Heaven, and so on. If you have the time, I would absolutely take advantage and farm these out now. And that brings me to the point of this video, how to optimize and farm Last Wish weapons in about a minute or two. We're going to be talking about two different methods here. One will be the old reliable anarchy strat and the other will be the challenge strat. Both these methods are fast and very easy to do. There's just some preference and a little bit of difference in them. I'll go over why you should do one or the other and it just depends which one you want to do. But first, let's explain each strategy. So first off, technically speaking, you can bring whatever class that you want. However, I will say that bringing hunters and as many of them as possible just makes this so much easier and lets you completely turn your brain off and go watch a YouTube video in the background or, I don't know, go learn advanced calculus, whatever you do for fun. The concept is you bring as many hunters as possible and then have them equip the Marksman Golden Gun Super and Acrobat Dodge will make you and everybody else radiant upon dodging. Then make sure that they have started your scales on, if you have them, that is, and slap on an Insulation mod, which helps you regain your dodge ability. And then you slap on two Kinetic Surge mods, and I know what you're thinking, but Sneak, didn't Bungie patch Kinetic Surge with Golden Gun? Yes, and no. Bungie did patch three Kinetic Surges working with Golden Gun, but it still works with two Kinetic Surges. Why? Don't know. Bungie game. Maybe ask them. Anyway, equip two Kinetic Surge mods with that insulation on your boots and you're good to go there. Also, if you want a full detailed breakdown of this Golden Gun DPS build, I do have a video that explains everything in detail. I'll put a link to that in the description below. But to make it brief, other mods that are needed slash helpful are two copies of Powerful Attraction, Distribution, Pop for Friends, and Radiant Light. Additionally, you want to have a Siphon mod or Heavy Handed on just for a good way to make orbs for your build for that X4 piece of light before you get to the damage phase. As for Titans and Warlocks, if you're one of these classes, you're just bringing a Well or a Bubble simply for orb generation purposes. Now as for strategies, let's talk about the Anarchy method first. For this, you have one player running Anarchy, and your job will be to stick Callie with Anarchy when she drops her shield, and attempts to teleport to start the encounter. Meanwhile, your team is sitting by the first plate and one person steps on the plate to charge it and then the plate will start glowing. Callie will try to teleport to that plate and attack you. However, this is exactly what you want as when she does arrive, you again lay an anarchy trap and this time she will not be able to teleport away. At this point, she's completely stuck and you can proceed to damage her. Just periodically hit her with anarchy and otherwise it's goldie time. Have all your hunters hit her with a solar weapon, literally any solar weapon, just a proc monochromatic, and then use golden gun. Shoot her in the head as Chris shots, then they'll make orbs, and then that is vital to this strategy, by the way. Once your super is out, you dodge, and if enough orbs have been made, you instantly get your super back, and now you just repeat the process. Solar weapon shot, into golden gun, into dodge, until Callie is left with zero health. Once she hits zero, stop shooting her and let her attempt to teleport, otherwise she'll just be kind of stuck there with zero health and won't die. Once she does attempt to teleport, then you can shoot her and she'll uh, kind of implode and the counter is now over and you get your one drop. Also, quick thing to note here is that after the encounter ends and you get your drop, you can actually immediately reload Last Wish after you get your reward and it will send you right back to the Kali encounter. No need to reset your checkpoint and go through the beginning with Riven talking, just simply reload it and you'll be back to the rally flag and then you can do the encounter all over again. Now let's discuss the challenge strat. But before we do, if you're enjoying the video or this shot helps you, a sub would be much appreciated and a like and a comment also go a long way in helping the channel and fighting the uh, YouTube algorithm. Alright, let's get back to the video. For well, the challenge shot, you'll have to actually do the encounter, but the encounter to hit the objective for challenge is still pretty short and you get two drops at the end instead of just one. The requirement for challenge is to capture all nine plates in the room as well as summon and defeat the three taken ogres in the center of the room. For this, you just split up your fire team into three teams of two and divide the three plates among each team. One player from each team will cap a plate and then move on to a second plate next to them while the other player for that team will go straight to the middle and work on downing those ogres. Speaking of the ogres, the way to summon them is to cap the incorrect symbol in the room. So for example, if you don't see the infinity symbol in the center of the room, that means you would normally avoid the infinity symbol to do the encounter normally. However, for challenge, you want to intentionally step on those but be careful as there's a small bug that can happen when you cap all three ogre plates at the same time and the game will only summon two of them, which will then fail the challenge. Instead, have your team cap two of the ogre plates initially and then have the third one capped as someone's second plate to capture before they head to the center of the room. Now, I know this sounds a little bit uh, like you're juggling a lot of stuff, but trust me, it really is incredibly simple. And once you get into the motions of it, it's like second nature to you. Now, as for DPS, you're going to be using the exact same strategy as before, except Anarchy is no longer required, 
and instead you can have that person be on tractor cannon and still be able to participate in the uh, golden gun olympics after the initial tractor shot as you can see on screen or you've already been seeing we're just effortlessly downing cali with plenty of time to spare We've even tried using Golden Gun with only two Star Eater Hunters, and we've still been able to just down Cali for challenge, so it's not a very hard requirement. Now to quickly summarize what the difference between the Anarchy Method and this one is, the Anarchy Method can technically be faster as a timed run, since you just fly in, rally, go stick her with Anarchy, and wait for her to come to you, and then DPS, followed by just reloading the raid after your one drop. However, this is only beneficial to you if your fire team is with players with good connections, slash playing on a PC or a new gen console, otherwise your load times might take a bit of a hit, which makes the point of doing the Anarchy method pointless as the other method gives you two drops per reload. Also keep in mind that since you're getting only a single drop from the Anarchy strat, you have no dupe protection that Bungie recently added, which means you can get like three class items in a row and well, that would suck, right? On the flip side, for challenge mode, it does technically take longer to set up, but it's not a huge difference. And also, aside from the load times that I had just mentioned, doing this method does give you dupe protection where you shouldn't be able to get two of the same item to drop. So theoretically, it increases your odds of getting what you actually want instead of getting double armor of the exact same piece, so like two helmets, for example. Regardless, though, either method you choose works perfectly fine and allows you to get rewards after one to two minutes and is by far the best and the easiest farm while Last Wish is the current feature raid, so if you're able, I'd suggest you get the farming. Last thing I want to talk about is not the farm itself, but actually Hawthorne. And the reason I want to bring this up is because I still see people to this day not even know that this exists. Because, well, I mean, most people just ignore Hawthorne anyway, I don't blame them. Or they're just new or inexperienced. Anyway, there's a banner right here that says Last Wish Raid. You go to this banner and you can pick up a quest every week, not just a featured week, but every week. Pick up this quest and do the last wish raid what this does is it gives you a guaranteed red border when you beat the raid and then the quest you come back to hawthorne and you get another guaranteed red border for the week so that's two free red borders just by doing the raid normally after this you can go do cali and farm as long as you want but when it's not the feature raid for cali then you do this quest each week that's all i have for you today let me know what you think do you prefer anarchy do you prefer a challenge or do you prefer to just be an outcast and run double slugs with tracker if you like to support the channel consider subscribing today and hit like or leave a comment it is much appreciated and it does help a lot if you can't think of anything to say for a comment feel free to leave cali farm as the comment thanks for watching i'll see you next time